In our last video, we discussed how to prepare a FIFO method inventory record. And we, uh, in the video before, we discussed the differences between FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, as well as specific unit identification in terms of dealing with inventory. In this video, we're going to do the weighted average method. So we're going to work through that same problem we did last time. And again, it's attached right below this video if you want to uh, uh, download it. Uh, the question says, here are the inventory records for XYZ company for the month of August. Uh, and you can see there's the balance, the purchases and sales. And we've done the FIFO method. Now we're going to do the weighted average method. So uh, we start with the same starting point as the last one. We had a beginning balance of 15 units at $100. That means we didn't make a purchase on this day. We didn't make a sale on this day. We just had a balance of 15 units at $100 for $1,500. Uh, and again, even if your instructor hasn't uh, talked about inventory records, hasn't shown you something like this, this is a great way to keep track of your inventory. It really is. It's there in most textbooks. You'll see a chart that looks like this in most textbooks. Uh, but it's good to understand how to use it, even if your instructor hasn't exactly followed the same way I have. Um, okay, so that's August 1st. On to August 17th, we make a purchase. August 17th, we buy, oh dear, uh, 35 units for $90 each. So I'm going to track that in my purchases column. 35 at $90, 35 times 90 is $3,150. Now, similar to what we did for FIFO, we had 15 units at 100. We didn't sell them. And now we're adding to that total 35 units at 90. And of course, 35 times 90 is $3,150. Now with FIFO or LIFO, we would stop here. And we just say, OK, well, there we are, and we keep going. With weighted average, we need to combine the units. We need to total this up. And the way you do it is a little tricky. You total the quantity, and you total the total, but you don't total the unit cost or do anything there. So 15 plus 35 is 50 units. 1,500 plus 3,150 is, of course, 4,650. Uh, so now I have 50 units at a total value of 4,650. Now I figure out the weighted average unit cost. And what does that mean? Well, 190, the average there would be 95. But I've got to say, well, that's not the weighted average. Because I have 35 $90 units. I only have $1,500 units. The weighted average is going to be closer to 90 than it is to 100. How do I figure out that weighted average? I divide, oops, not minus, equals 4650 divided by 50. And that'll tell me my weighted average. And you'll see our weighted average here is 93. So that's the key step when you're doing the weighted average method. Whenever you make a purchase, figure out that average cost of your inventory and re-average it every time. So I'm going to draw a line underneath here, and I'm going to continue. But again, just to reiterate, we purchase some inventory. As soon as you make a purchase, you've got to say, OK, I don't want to keep my inventory separate now. FIFO and LIFO, I would keep it separate. Weighted average, I want to add them together. I want to combine them, and I want to figure out the average cost of what's in my inventory. In this case, the average cost of what's in our inventory is $93. Let's carry on to our sale. And you'll see how much easier weighted average is when it comes to sales. August 23rd, we sell 30 units. Now. With FIFO or LIFO, we would look back and we'd say, OK, which 30 did we sell? And if we were looking at FIFO, we would have done 15 at 100 and 35 at 90. If we're doing LIFO, or actually 15 at 100 and 15 at 90. If we're doing LIFO, we would have done 30 at 90, all, all, of, all of the most recent. On our weighted average, you don't have to worry about what came first and what came last. All of our units are $93 units. So if I sold 30 units, Again, I'm not going to worry about the sales price. That's important for journal entries, but it's not important for filling in our inventory record. I sell 30 units. I've got to say, what was the cost of those units? 93 bucks. I don't worry about what came first and what came last. I just take that average cost. 30 times 93 is 27.90, leaving me 20 at 93. Of course, I had 50. I sold 30. I'm left with 20. 20 times 93 is $1,860, and we're done that step. 
Let's move on to August 25th. We make another purchase. Of course, we track that in our purchases column. 10 at 87 bucks for 870. 20 times 93 is 1860. We're adding to that 10 at 87 for 870. And then we've just got a total and re average. So my total units here is 30. My total uh, cost in inventory is 2730. Uh, 2730 divided by 30 is 91. Our new weighted average cost of inventory is 91. So again, August 31st, we're going to sell some inventory. We sold 24 units. Again, the price is $150. We're not worried about price. We're worried about average cost. Here. So we sell 24 units. If we were doing FIFO, we would look at the oldest. If we were doing LIFO, we'd look at the most recent. We're doing weighted average. So we just look at that average number of 91. 24 times 91. By the way, I made the numbers here work out to even numbers. If you're doing a question and you don't work out to even numbers, Take as many decimal places as your teacher tells you, as many as you can is what I'd recommend. So if it's like 0.333, I would take as many decimals as I could. I would go 0.33333. Um, but in this case, they all work out to even numbers. So we're left with six units, again, at a cost of 91. Six times 91 is $546. And at this point, we're done. We can prepare our journal entries. The purchases will be identical to what the purchases were under FIFO. It doesn't make a difference. In fact, when we debit cash credit sales revenue, that's identical to FIFO too. The only thing different here is our cost of goods sold. So the journal entry for purchases, I'll just do one journal entry for purchases. Let me just uh, clean this up a bit. Uh, no border, and we'll fill it in in white. Our journal entries for purchases are always going to be debits to inventory and credits to cash or accounts payable. Uh, so it's 3150 if we're looking at August 17th. Or if we were looking at August 25th, we would debit inventory credit cash for 870. Again, pretty straightforward entry. The sales are the trickier entries, but they're not that much trickier. So let's do August 23rd sale. Uh, whenever I make a sale, I'm going to debit cash or accounts receivable, and I'm going to credit sales revenue. I'm going to debit cost of goods sold or COGS, and I'm going to credit inventory for the fact that inventory walked out the door with my customer. So for August 23rd, well, the COGS and inventory is easy. It's right there, 2790. So let's fill that in. The debit to cash and credit to sales, I've just got to look at my chart. I sold 30 units at $150 a piece. 30 times 150 is still 4,500, just the same as when we did FIFO method. There's our journal entry for August 23rd. Our final journal entry for August 31st. Uh, again, it's the same style of entry. Debit cash, credit sales revenue, debit cost of goods sold, credit inventory. Our cost of goods sold in inventory comes from that bottom cell there, 2184. Again, oftentimes if you're doing FIFO, you have to total, there might be two different types of inventory, you just add them together. Here it's it's just the one. Debit cash, credit sales, well, on August 31st we sold 24 units at $150 each. 24 times 150 is 3600 now we've done the entries we've prepared the weighted average inventory record and at this point we should be feeling good about the weighted average method at least doing a basic question on the weighted average method a couple other things I might uh, throw at my class I might ask them what's our uh, gross profit or gross margin so I might say what's the gross profit oh dear I'm having keyboard problems. I'm using a different laptop from normal. That's why, I, I don't know if you noticed the webcam and the audio quality is different from normal. Anyway, what's the gross profit or what's the gross margin? Well, the gross profit or gross margin is our sales minus our cost of goods sold equals gross 
profit with no question mark. So our company's sales revenue is going to be its total of its sales. We sold 30 units at 150 and 24 units at 150. So add those up, 30 times 150 plus 24 times 150. Uh, well, let's see, that's 54 units sold at $150. We sold $8,100 worth of inventory. Our cost of goods sold is just the sum of our cost of goods sold column, 2790 plus 2184 in this case. Sales minus COGS is our gross profit, 3126. We know that that minus the rest of our expenses would uh, give us a, a net income figure. So that's something I often ask my classes. Uh, and again, the gross profit or gross margin represents how much we marked up our product above the cost. So uh, with that done, I'm going to leave inventory here. There's a lot of other topics in inventory. You can talk about the lower of cost and net realizable value rule, which is also called the lower of cost and market rule. Uh, and there's a lot of ratios here, like inventory turnover, as well as gross margin percentage. But I think we've got the basics. We understand FIFO, LIFO, weighted average, and specific unit identification. And we've worked through two examples of tracking inventory using the FIFO and weighted average methods. That's all for this topic. Next time, we'll talk capital assets.